Aliens and UFOs, the Loch Ness Monster, Bigfoot, giants, are any of these blurry creatures real? And if there is evidence of their existence, how would this fit into a biblical worldview? Well, the hosts of the podcast, Blurry Creatures, are here today to help us think through a lot of these things. It's a really, really interesting conversation that, again, I wanted to do as we are leading up to Halloween. Now, you guys know my perspective on Halloween is not the same as how the world celebrates Halloween. Go back and listen to yesterday's episode or watch yesterday's episode if you haven't already caused a little bit of controversy in the comment section of YouTube as there was a lot of spirited disagreement with what my guest yesterday argued about Halloween. But you should also go back and listen to an episode that I did with my mom a couple years ago about how she uses Halloween to celebrate the gospel and to share the gospel with her neighbors to truly be light in a darkness. My perspective is that that is possible. As Christians, I do think this is an issue around which we have a lot of Christian liberty and that you must apply the word of God with wisdom and with conviction of the Holy Spirit to lead your family and yourself um, in a way that aligns with beauty and truth. I do, though, think it's possible to bring redemption, to bring light, to bring uh, the gospel to Halloween and certain Halloween traditions without celebrating gore. So uh, part of that, part of kind of looking at the mysterious, looking into the realm of the paranormal is how I am kind of uh, leading up to Halloween on this show. So yesterday we talked about the origin of Halloween, the real history of Halloween. And today we are looking in this kind of in-between world. Now you will you will hear in my conversation with these two hosts, who are awesome, by the way, that I've got some questions. Okay, like I've got some serious skepticism about what they're talking about. I've got some disagreement, and I'm gonna go to the Bible and ask them some questions about how the possible existence of some of these things that are typically referred to as myths would fit into God's word. So really, really interesting conversation that I know that you all are going to love. Now, before we get into it, I got a few things to say. Number one, tonight, Wednesday, October 26th, we are putting out a parody, a parody that you have seen a couple times before. I did the first parody like this in 2018, the second in 2020, and now the third, just in time for the midterms. And that is my Democrat DNC ad parody, where I act like I am a spokesperson for the Democrat Party. And I tell you why you need to vote blue this November. And this one, in my opinion, it's the best that we've done. I loved the first two. Really fun. Got a really great reaction from you guys. But this one is the best. We went even farther than we typically do creatively. You guys are going to love it. So if you're listening to this on the 26th, make sure you check that out. It'll be on YouTube. It'll be on Instagram. It'll be on Twitter. If you're listening to this the next day, make sure that you go check that out and share it with your friends. Also, two stickers that we are promoting right now that our awesome design team just created. One of them is Rip row and it says 1973 to 2022 a little tombstone as we celebrate the death of the supreme court decision that allowed for the legal slaughter of unborn children for 49 years and then we've also got this vote sticker they're both five dollars buy them buy several share them with your friends share the vote stickers with your friends it's a good conversation starter make sure your christian conservative friends understand why voting matters make sure that they are informed maybe you are the leader in your friend group in your bible study in your family in your group text uh, that informs people about what the propositions are what the measures are what the local elections are and are for in your area you make sure that they are informed. You make sure that they know what's at stake. You give them a little sticker, take them with you to vote. It'll be a fun time. Early voting opens in most places. You can vote day of, of course, too. 
All right. I think that's all I have. Uh, If you love this podcast, please leave us a five-star review wherever you listen, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Play. If you haven't subscribed on YouTube yet, please do that. That would mean a lot to us. All right. This episode is brought to you by our friends at Good Ranchers. Go to goodranchers.com slash Allie. That's goodranchers.com slash Allie. All right. Now, without further ado, here are our new friends from Blurry Creatures. Nate, Luke, thank you so much for joining us. Whoever wants to answer this first question, go for it. Tell us what Blurry Creatures is and why you guys started that podcast. Uh, Blurry Creatures is a podcast. We talk about all kinds of the fringe creatures, everything from Bigfoot to you know werewolf creatures to historical creatures, ancient giants. Um, I had the idea in 2019 to do a podcast about this because I was remodeling houses and I was listening to I didn't want to listen to anything, you know, political or sports, so I started listening to podcasts about Bigfoot and stuff, and eventually I just got I got sucked into it. So um, around 2019, designed a logo, got the website and everything, and then Luke and I were friends uh, via some other friends, and he was tweeting about Bigfoot one day, and I was like, hey, I got this idea to start a podcast. You want to do it with me? Because I knew Luke did a podcast with his brother, and he knew how to do podcasting, so... We decided to start a Bigfoot podcast with uh, all filtered through the biblical paradigm and it just kind of took off and we had no idea what we were getting ourselves into. But we talk a lot about ancient history, biblical history, um, the Nephilim, giants and and Bigfoot and all that stuff. So it's blurry creatures can be anything. We have a <laughs> the list of creatures is getting longer by the day. Um, it's pretty interesting. We, we thought maybe, you know, I don't know how many podcast episodes we can do about this, but man, there's so many creatures out there that are considered blurry and blurry has kind of become its own sort of yeah. adjective of of what we talk about and it's it's funny people are like this is blurry and they'll send us a picture of something that's like some sort of weird anomaly that's out yeah. there some sort of ufo so we talk we yeah we do get into aliens and ufos and all that other stuff too but we try to filter it all through the biblical paradigm so that's that's kind of how it started and yeah we had no idea what we were getting ourselves into so yeah so you mentioned that word blurry luke could you tell us like what exactly is meant by blurry creatures <laughs> because before i listened to the podcast i had no i had no idea what it was going to be about all the people that recommended it to me they did not even tell me they just said you have to listen to this so i didn't know <laughs> what to expect so tell us like why you picked that name blurry creatures yeah it, you know it comes out of it's tongue in cheek, right? It's the idea that like all these pictures of of Bigfoot end up blurry for whatever reason. So yeah. there's a uh, there's actually a a joke. I think it's Mitch Hedberg, Nate, that yeah, where he talks about the idea that the Bigfoot always has blurry blurry creatures. It's meant to be kind of funny, um, it, but I, I think what the the idea with with the show itself is that people have experiences they can't explain. People have encounters with things they can't explain, and if you come from a Christian perspective, there's a lot of things like, like that that you, a lot of people have trouble putting into their their Christian paradigm. And, and I think the church really doesn't address a lot of what the world calls paranormal. And the paranormal world out there doesn't really address any of it through the context of, of the church or Christianity. Mm-hmm. And so because we're Christians, one of our, one of the things this has turned into is is trying to put all these things in, into a biblical paradigm that, that, that this stuff does all fit that you can explain these things through through the understanding of, of the Bible and the Old Testament and and our faith and, and that's become kind of the common ground like Nate said that we we started out to just to kind of figure out what was Bigfoot gonna be and it's really a journey podcast it's 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 taken us into a lot of different places but what I think we're really trying to do is provide context for a lot of things that people are experiencing. We know the government is just really in the last year has started to publicly recognize what they call UAPs. Of course, they changed the UFO moniker to UAP, right? Because UFO has all of these these stigmas attached to it, right? Yeah. Yes, exactly. And so, what's UAP? Unidentified aerial, aerial phenomena. phenomena. Aerial. Yeah. F- yeah. Oh, okay, got it. So there, these things are happening, and I, I don't think the church has done a great job of of addressing any of this, right? Maybe there aren't great answers. And that's really what Nate and I are trying to do is to try to find better answers. Yeah. Um, 
you know, through with with our foundation as with our foundation as our faith. And yeah. so, for whatever reason, it's resonated with a lot of people. I think that that our that our faith and, and that Christianity is big enough to encompass all of these things. And there yeah. are explanations for all of this in the biblical text and, and in in the biblical narrative. And uh, that's. That's yeah, what getting blur- blurry is all about, right? Yeah. So. Well, I'm curious to hear more specifically about the alien UFO issue, because I have been asked that, as you said, there's been more coverage on this over the past couple years. There have been some people in the media and the news, mostly conservative, which is kind of interesting, um, just saying, OK, do we have any priority to try to identify what these UFOs are? There have been sightings. And so people have asked me, could it be possible theologically for there to be life on other planets like what could these ufos be if it's not some kind of spying device from say china and so how have you guys worked that out biblically like is it possible biblically with what we know about the universe and who god made for there to be a different life form on another planet yeah i mean we i mean the bible talks about this specifically like we talk about a lot about genesis 6 event if you read genesis 6 through through the sort of the what the ancients read it as is that you had angels coming into our realm and and messing with human beings and they traded women for technology and so we talk about the genesis 6 event in sort of the biblical paradigm that most seminaries kind of interpret it as something completely different so what we try to do is say hey this isn't a new thing um anything extraterrestrial is just an off-earth entity right human beings have been given dominion dominion here on earth by god but anything else angels other entities that are in sort of the the uh, heavenly court is what we talk about because the Bible talks about all kinds of strange things, right? And anything that's not that wasn't given dominion here on Earth would de- technically be an ET. So it's not a new thing; it's been happening. And to talk about it in Genesis, it's just sort of the government has reframed this, and Hollywood has reframed this as alien. But anything not human is technically alien. Does that make sense? So the Bible has a lot of these encounters. You know, all all throughout the Bible, a- these angels that are not from here are interacting with human beings, and I think so. You're the saying problem- aliens are aliens, how we see them, like ET type yeah. thing. Like, is you're saying that they're actually encounters with angels? Like, angels are these, or, or what people are referring to as aliens? I think sometimes. I don't think always. Okay. I think sometimes uh, encounters with non-human entities technically are if you if you take the word et it's extra ter- extraterrestrial right so right. non-earth entity would angels would fall into that category but in terms of like the hollywoodized version of an alien you know we'd have to get down to specifics are we talking about the gray aliens are we talking about you know who's flying the ufos sometimes it's all the above you know it's like who is crafting, who is flying these craft? It's it's complicated, but I think you have to sort of get Christians to understand that like, you know, non-earth entities have been coming here and interacting with human beings and it's in the Bible and you can, it's, you can support it through scripture and make it, and you have to start there and then kind of work your way up to modern day encounters. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? It's, it's hard to convince somebody from the beginning of just saying, oh, aliens are here, but, and then they're like, wait. I've never heard of anything like this. We're like, we have to go back to Genesis and, and read some of these more obscure accounts and actually understand that this isn't anything new, technically speaking. Okay, I'm so excited to tell you about my first sponsor for the day. I've talked to you about them once before, and that is Range Leather. This is a family-owned business that makes amazing leather goods right here in In the U.S., the owners of Range Leather, Kyle and Bailey, started their leather company from their kitchen table with the goal of making leather goods that last forever. And guys, I love their stuff. I wish I were wearing their leather earrings uh, that they sent me a couple months ago right now. I don't know why I'm not wearing them. I love them. I wear them all the time. I've got them in black. I've got them in brown. I love their leather bags. They sent a leather wallet. Truly amazing, high-quality stuff. I love that they're Christian conservatives just like us. They've been 
fans of Relatable for a long time. And they sent me some stuff and they said, we just want to kind of bless you with our stuff. And then they become a sponsor. And I'm just so excited to tell you about them. We talk a lot about sending our money to companies that are uh, supporting our values and to people that align with our values and principles. This is a great way to do that. Uh, Christmas is coming up and the purses, the bags, the belts, the wallets, the jewelry from Range Leather would make amazing, really thoughtful gifts for people in your life, men or women. You can receive 15% off your first order when you go to rangeleather.com. Use coupon code Allie. That's rangeleather.com code Allie for that 15% off your first order. Rangeleather.com code Allie. I guess so. my question would be like where that fits into the creation accounts because these are not animals and they're not, they wouldn't be human beings made in the image of God. So like, what are they? Where do they fall in the, in the creation categories? They're not included, I would guess, in God's plan of redemption through Christ since they're not image bearers. And so, yeah. or, but if they're not angels, cause you said only sometimes you think these interactions are with angels and sometimes they're not. I have a hard time fitting that into my understanding of creation and God's eternal plan of redemption for human beings. What are these like other human subhuman things? You know, I just don't have like a theological category in my mind to put them in. Luke, what do you think? No, I think that's a great, that's a great question. I, I think that the Bible in and of itself is the story of, of God redeeming humanity unto himself and, and, and redeeming humanity back into the family of God. Um, but we know that, we know from the Bible that there are angels, there are hosts of heaven, there is there are fallen angels, there are, there's a diversity of creation, as you would imagine, that it isn't on earth, that's, that is in the, in the spiritual realm, if you want to use that term, the spiritual realm, or in the heavenlies. And we know that there was a rebellion in heaven. We know that in, from Job, that when the earth was created, that the, the, angels, the angels cheered, the angels stood and, and, and watched. So there is a, a kingdom of heaven that, that I think we can understand in the same way that we have the diversity of creation on earth. There's a diversity of creation in heaven. And these are, you know, angels is a medieval term, right? It's the idea of angelos is, is, is a messenger. And, and I think in some ways we've simplified a very diverse spiritual realm. Like we, we know from, I think the darkness is the easiest way to kind of understand that there's a lot of weird things that are, are bad in the spiritual realm. And, and I think, you know, from people's experiences with the demonic and, and even some of these these creatures we know are bad, nefarious sort of evil things that you can have quite a diversity of, you know, of creation in, in, the, in, spiritual in the spiritual world. Yeah. So I, I think that the idea that we limit, um, and the Bible doesn't. Talk, here's the other thing, Ali. The Bible doesn't talk a lot about that. The, the Bible is specifically about our story, right? There are breadcrumbs. Nate talked about Genesis six and the idea that there was the these. The sons of God. You go back to the Hebrew, right? Hebrew, and it's Elohim, and you can find this same word um, in Psalm 82, and you can find it in in Deuteronomy 32. The, the there are specific terminology for spiritual beings. These what we call the angels, the sons of God, but it's very broad brush, and I think we've just we've sort of decided because of uh, medieval art, because of the Renaissance art, that that these things have wings. They look like this, and this is mm -hmm. the only way they look like. And and we've really just just created two things. It's like demons are really gnarly looking and, and and nasty, and they do this. And angels have wings, and they're and they're white. But then you read Revelation, and John describing what he's seen, and it's like there's some crazy stuff out there. There's four heads, and there's right. there's flaming there's flaming beings that. You know that even that God placed at the gate of Eden when we were when we were booted mm -hmm. out. Um, yeah. So I I think we need to open our mind in some ways to to if there is diversity of creation here on Earth, we can look around. I can look at my window and see trees and deer and cows and horses and and creation is is immensely diverse. I think oftentimes we you know as Earth and as on Earth that is is in heaven. This idea that that I think we really limit 
we're pretty limited on God to think that there's just like one set of this and one set of that when it comes to the heavenly realm. Um, hmm. So, so you're saying that, they can, they're just the, your answer to my question of like where it falls in line with the creation categories is that in, in y'all's mind, these are spiritual beings. These aren't like a subcategory of humans or animals that these are somewhere in the spiritual realm, right? And we don't know exactly where, and we don't know exactly what they're doing, but it is possible that these are spiritual beings that at some point have interacted in our physical realm. Yeah, I, yeah, and we, talk, and we talk a lot about that on the show, about how originally that's where the giants came from. So if you look back in the, in the, in, you know, the Old Testament, you have Dave, David and Goliath is the most right. popular story of humans mm-hmm. interacting, you know, David and, and this giant. Well, that's just one tribe. And there's, there's literally dozens of tribes in the Old Testament of these, these giants. And if you look back, historically speaking, these angels bred with humans. And that's, the, that's how the Hebrews viewed that giants got here. They were hybrids. They were, they, were, they were not supposed to be here, but they were part human, part angel. And that's the men of renown. And a lot of people say that's what the Greeks were writing about, the Greek gods, these, these half man, half, half angel demigods. And so that was their way of recording the history. But the Bible talks about it too, calls them the men of renown in Genesis. And, and that's why the flood came. The flood, the flood was a part of resetting humanity, give humanity back the dominion here on earth because he had corrupted creation. Hmm. And so we talk about how plants, animals, humans, everything was corrupted. That's why God floods the world. It isn't because humans are just particularly sinful at this, gen- this generation. It's like the whole world was genetically corrupted. And it sounds I've fantastical. Never heard that before. It sounds crazy, but it's 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 very much how the ancients viewed the world, and it's the biblical story. And what we do is we say, "Hey, people are still seeing these creatures today. Hmm. People are still seeing weird things. People are having sleep paralysis episodes where things are coming into their room, and they're swearing to us, and that this is a physical entity coming and interacting with me. What is it? People see Bigfoot out in the woods." People see werewolf creatures. People see all kinds of stuff. People see these uh, UFOs flying around. How do you explain this through the biblical paradigm? Well, I think we've just sort of lost the magic and the whimsy of this whole story, right? Like God created human beings, put them on this earth, but we're not the center of the story. You know, we there's so much else going on around us. And there's this war that we were sort of born into between, you know, heaven and hell. And we're kind of in the middle of it. And sometimes we see sort of the the effects of this war, if that makes sense. Like we're, you know, we don't know always what's going on, but God has sort of protected us behind the veil to see in all these things. But there's some Christians out there who swear they can see behind the veil and they can sort of see these these um, different creatures and different entities that, that God has, has, that's sort of interacting around us. Mm-hmm. And it's it's pretty amazing how many people have a story of something paranormal or weird. So... Like Luke said in the beginning, like what we do is there's a lot of church and theological podcasts that are afraid to get paranormal. And there's a lot of paranormal podcasts that are afraid to get theological. And what we do is we kind of put those things together and say, look, the Bible is strange. It's got a lot of weird stuff in it. And that's okay. And the, and, and the weirder is, in our mind, is the more important. If it's weird, it's important. There's something there. And I, and I love that about scripture is it doesn't, it's not PC. It doesn't tiptoe around anything. It allows you to be an adult and says, here's a weird thing, deal with it. Yeah. And I think the church a lot of times just tiptoes around those things. Like, oh, we can't talk about that. It's too strange. But I don't think ancient people were afraid of complicated ideas and thoughts. I mean, and we talk a lot yeah. about, you know, the ancient world. What were they building? Pyramids and all these structures. And how did they do that? And, and we filter it all through the biblical paradigm. We give a lot of people answers because they're going to, a lot of people are seeing the proof that the ancient world isn't what we're being taught in school and historically speaking, and they're getting sucked into like ancient aliens and all these other weird UFO religions. And so what we're saying is, no, 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 this all fits into the, the, the paradigm that the, the yeah. Christian Bible gives you. And Jesus is redeeming all of this. And this is why you need a savior because the kingdom of darkness is so much bigger and darker than you can imagine. And this is what Christ saves you from. Yeah. And, and it's, it's weird how like talking about a creature that you see can you can work yourself backwards and, and you're like, okay, I saw this thing when I was a kid. I've thought about it my whole life. I've always been confused. But now I understand that this is just one creature in a, in a line of um, yeah. weird, weird, unexplained things. Oh, 
All right, let me tell you about Good Ranchers. You know them, you love them, or maybe you don't. And if you don't, what in the world are you doing? Why aren't you getting your meat from Good Ranchers? Why are you still going to the grocery store every week to try to figure out what is a good cut of meat and what's not? You look at the stickers on the meat that says made in the USA, not realizing that that probably just means packaged in the USA. This meat is probably imported from overseas and who knows what standards it's even meeting. Why not get all of your meat from the US, support American farms and ranchers, support a company that is run by conservative Christians who are truly on a mission called by God to sell meat that is ethically raised, sustainably sourced and helps American farming. So go to goodranchers.com slash Allie this month only. You can get $30 off plus two free pounds of chicken with your order. That is goodranchers.com slash Allie. Use code Allie at checkout for $30 off plus two free pounds of chicken. Go ahead and subscribe. Get that box of meat sent to your front door every month. That's what we do. We love it so much. Makes our life so much easier. That's American meat delivered right to your front door. Go to goodranchers.com slash Allie. Goodranchers.com slash Allie. I think it's hard for people, as you were saying, it's hard for people to imagine that there could be anything on earth that is undiscoverable for us. Yeah, of course, maybe some things in space, but that there could be anything on planet earth that we haven't been able to identify clearly, not blurrily, but clearly and identify (laughs) um, because we kind of feel, I think as humans, maybe it's hubris or maybe it's just technology. We feel kind of like we're at the end of discovery. We're at the end of history, basically. Like we're at the end of conquest. When of course we know that's not true, even if we're just looking at science. There are new discoveries that we find every day that correct things that we used to see. And so I I do agree that I think we have to open ourselves up to the possibility that there is a lot, even just here on earth, that we have not discovered or know about. I think about the Loch Ness Monster. I studied abroad in Scotland. And so we talk about it, but of course you talk about it like a joke. You You don't ever talk about the real possibility. And Basically, just what we hear is that, yeah, there have been some blurry pictures or there have been some sightings that people thought was really the Loch Ness Monster, but then it turned out to be like a giant fish or something. So I'm wondering if y'all, maybe you, Luke, if you could talk a little bit more about specifically the Loch Ness Monster. Since I like Scotland, <laughs> I'm, I'm interested in I'm interested in that one. Like, is it possible for there to be a Loch Ness Monster? I, yeah. I want to go back to one thing real quick sure. um, that that I think is important to remember. And, and we talk about the spiritual realm and we specifically talked about Genesis six. Um, there was a very physical interaction there in order, in order to procreate. Right. Like, I mean, this is a family show, but like this is this happened. That, and well, we have can, physical yeah, can, can one of you talk a little of, bit specifically more? What When you, y'all have said Genesis six a sure. couple times, but there's lots of people that don't know what you're referring to. So what are you talking about? Yeah, Genesis six four yep. is that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, saw they were fair, and they took them as wives. And then there were giants, or however the translation is, Nephilim, born into the land. And so there's there is a very real physical interaction between the sons of God, which in the Hebrew is the Elohim. Ben Elohim is actually the Hebrew word, and and that word Elohim is interchangeable in in the in in the Hebrew. But it doesn't refer to men, so this isn't. There's no way to to move this around, switch this around, and say that this isn't anything but um, a, a a heavenly being, a, sp- a spiritual being. But look, there's a very physical interaction here, and we see this throughout the Old Testament. Whether it be um, the angel of the Lord coming and eating with Abraham, the angel of the Lord wrestling with Jacob, the angels walking into Sodom and Gomorrah. Right? These are. Yeah. As much as we talk about the spiritual realm and the idea these are spirits, there's a very much a physicality to these beings um, in our realm here when they visit our realm. And I think that, that when you start to look at things like that and realize that there had to be these physical interactions, it wasn't just spiritual in the sense that we, the way we imagine a spirit world. Um, I think that can change the way that we look at things like UFOs and the way that we look at things, um, in, in interactions with other other things that don't really fit into our, you know, our, our Earth paradigm in the sense of, of of the things that we that we've been told or taught. Um, yeah. 
So that that is what I'm referring to with Genesis six. It's it's, yeah. it's it's a small part of the Bible, but there's a very significant thing that happens there. And yeah. yeah. And and it sets off a big series of events. You have these hybrid beings, giants, and we know that there are stories across every civilization. We know that they found giant bones up until the 1930s where that all of a sudden they've got whisked away and they're no, they are no more. Um, yeah. These were these are, are part of our history. They end up in the Bible in a ton of places, including the most famous with the native talked about David and Goliath, right? Like they have these, these were these hybrid beings. So yeah, if, if they, wonder, are, they have been, wouldn't they have been? So you're referring to, you said the sons of man or sons of God saw the daughters of man were attractive. They came together. And then Nate, what you were talking about earlier was like genetic corruption on earth. Yeah. And so God says that the earth is, corrupted he saw the wickedness of man was great on earth and every intention of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually and so god decided to spare noah and his family and of course some of the animals and send this flood to destroy the earth so wouldn't have the creatures that you're talking about wouldn't they have been destroyed like if they weren't animals and great only question. noah's yeah. family was preserved what happened there so it says they were there before and after you know and it says there were giants in the earth in those days before and after that. So some survived mm. somehow. And mm. some people think that maybe they could have gone underground. Maybe they could have gone off earth and come back. Maybe the there was Nephilim another. The were on earth in those days. This is verse 4. And also afterward, when the sons of God came into the daughters of man, they bore children to them. These were the mighty men who were of old. That's men of renown, as you were talking about earlier. Oh, yeah. yeah. It says the men of renown. Um, yeah. And so... Yeah, that's that's interesting. I have never noticed that, and also afterward before. Yeah, hmm. well, it, it yeah. has to be right. You have you have Goliath. That's post flood. So you have a giant, and how does but that we're happen? We're mostly taught that that's just a really tall person. I feel like in church, I think we're typically just, you know, we're told right. that he's tall. Right. Yeah, I'm but tall. it's it's. it's don't you think it's interesting, though, that like if you think about it from and this is what a lot of my friends get hang ups on in the Old Testament. They don't understand the violence in the Old Testament. Why is there why is God commanding Joshua and Caleb and these other, you know, Israelites to go out and wipe out these tribes, every last woman and child and their animals? You have to ask yourself some questions. And so so many people abandon their faith because they go, God is just this in, in the Old Testament is violent. He's commanding these yeah. people to kill. It's like, well, they're not human. I mean, if you think about it from that perspective, it's like they're not supposed to be here. All of and them, all the all of the enemies of Israel, you think were not human? I think they were corrupted, genetically corrupted lines of these Nephilim, and they were they were practicing, you know, witchcraft and and sorcery, and they were they were corrupted beyond just like your typical, you know, understanding of like. Like human pe beings that just reject God, I think that's different than some of these ancient tribes. I think they had, like we've talked about on our show, that they were practicing, you know, they were practicing types of sorcery and that were that were beyond our scope, beyond our understanding, to the point where they were corrupting themselves. They were doing things that were so far outside of, of, of God's law that they had to be exterminated. That's what I, that's what I think the Old Testament is trying to ex explain. It's hard. It's hard for even me to say that, but you, you have these commandments of them supposed to wipe these people out. And if you think about it from like just human on human interaction, that seems pretty counter to when Jesus comes and says, love your enemies. Like what, you know what I'm saying? That's a big hang up for most people that theologically speaking, the flood's a big hang up. Sodom and Gomorrah is a big hang up. Um, you know, these, these wars in the Old Testament are a big hang up. But if you think about it, that there are these, these corrupted, there's a corrupted creation that's, that's sort of spawned on the earth and God is trying to sort of redeem humanity. Like you said in the beginning of the episode, we are created in the image of God and they hate that. I think some of these tribes that were hybrids were not, they, they, they like didn't have souls or something. They were not part of God's plan. They were not supposed to be here. And they were, they were like parasites on the earth. I know it sounds fantastical, but there's so much historical evidence for these things to have been here. And if you look back at the tribes, even some of these giant tribes, they're described, their physical traits are even described. You know, and you have like, like the legendary giants like Og, who had this bed that was like 15 feet long. And what's he doing? You know, it's like they practiced occult magic and they were doing things that were so corrupt that they had to be wiped out. That's kind of what I, I think the Old Testament is trying to tell us. Hmm. That's interesting. I mean, go ahead. Go ahead. 
I would say not not a hundred out of a hundred. I I think when you look at like the Philistines and these different places, but I think the conquests of Joshua, where they go into the Promised Land, and they and they the spies come back and say, there are giant people there. There are giant, there are giants there, and everything else is giant mm-hmm. there. That 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 is some of what God God is passing judgment. I think it makes a lot more sense when you realize that that these were products of you know of the fall the fallen angels you know creating their own progeny yet again doing the same same thing you know after the flood and yeah you know, i think that's how we get giants now we know that goliath and his brothers were mercenaries for the philistines so you know it's probably not the philistines were probably not a giant tribe but they employed giants to you know to fight on their behalf we know that david battled goliath and so I think there's context there, and, and what, what we're trying to say is there's context here to understand God passing judgment. And we know that the New Testament, that 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 through the sacrifice of Jesus, that God takes a different stance toward humanity. Um, but I, I think this, the idea that Genesis 6 is a product of Genesis 3, which is which is when God says that the seed of the woman will crush the head of the serpent basically basically prophesying the coming of, of the messiah which we know to be jesus and what what happens after that and plays out through the old testament we believe at least in, in our biblical worldview that that the darkness is trying to prevent the messiah coming through a the line of every way of possible oh, the line of adam yeah. yeah and the way to prevent anything coming from the line of adam is to muddy that with the dna of the of the fallen angels and that, and and, hmm. and you can see this thread being pulled right it's it's noah being saved he's the he's the last righteous one whether that means righteous in heart we also maybe maybe that completely is righteous and pure uh, in, in blood that he's, yeah. he hasn't been corrupted by you know by an outside dna and hmm. we know the darkness can't create here's the other thing darkness cannot create anything from nothing only, only god creates they can only manipulate and because of what we see in the Old Testament, um, we talked about the physicality we just talked about. There had to be the ability to mix of these DNAs, as the Bible specifically talks about it. So there is some phys- there is definitely physicality to these to these beings. Okay, quick pause to tell you guys about Birch gold group. I don't have to tell you that inflation is out of control. Thanks to the spending of our federal government, it has just gotten worse. You feel it in your pocketbook. And Joe Biden is only making it worse with every spending decision that he makes. So you want to make sure that your savings are protected. Text Allie to 989-898 and Birch Gold will send you a free info kit on protecting your savings with gold in a tax sheltered account. These are great people with almost 20 years experience converting IRAs and 401ks into precious metals IRAs. Do not allow this administration, this crazy economy to devalue your savings. Text Ally to 989-898. Claim your free no obligation info kit from Birch Gold. You can check it out. You can learn about it. That's Ally to 989-898. I haven't spent a whole lot of time thinking about Genesis 6 and Nephilim, mm-hmm. but you're saying the sons of God are actually fallen angels, right? So yeah. demons, they're the ones who are creating. So why do you think they're called sons of God if these are fallen angels? Well, the sons of God is the Elohim. It's 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 the angelic race. So some angels left their posts. They were called the Watchers, and they left. You know, they were they left their posts, came down into our realm. So they were just angels that interacted with women. So they were, mm-hmm. you know, as you can. Like, a, like, what does an angel look like? How does how do humans interact with angels in the Bible? There's no difference, right? But they came, they sort of left their job. I think angel is, you know, for what we talk about a lot on our show is that the heavenly court, God gives everyone jobs, right? So some, some angels have jobs, the seraphim, the cherubim, these people, they ha- these people, I say people, I meant these angels have a specific title and it is always usually described to what they do. Supposedly there was... 200 watchers they were what they were supposedly you know guardians of humanity watching humanity they came down and they they left their post they made a deal and left and they came down on you know a lot of the ancient traditions they landed on mount hermon 
and they they were given they they basically traded technology and knowledge for these women. They lusted after women. What do you mean traded they, technology? So from the heavenly realm, um, like you know the occult sciences. And Luke and I talk about this, the sacred sciences, you know, like the mis- the mystery schools, all the like the occult sciences that things like metallurgy and all these things, they taught us how to go to war with each other, how to mine metals, how to how to do all these things. That, how did human how did humans learn how to build stuff? How do we learn how to, you know, manufacture tools and and where do we get this knowledge from? It was like a sacred knowledge. And that's the that's the Genesis uh, account, right? Like. Oh, you can be like the gods. You can have this knowledge. So we got seduced. You know, we were sort of created in this this immoral state, and 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 we were in the garden. And then the serpent comes along and says, "You want to be like God? You want to know that? You want to have the knowledge?" And I think that these. So you think you know, that enti- the, that uh, human beings' ability to like innovate technology is actually a part of the fall? I think. I think. Yeah. I think that. I think no, that there are certain. Not all of it. Go ahead, Luke. No, I would say the. I, I think it's the acceleration. I, th- I think what, and we've had we've run through this. This is a very. This is an interesting topic. If you want to run through the genealogy, everybody wants to doesn't want to slog through the genealogy of the Bible. But when you do, you can line up a lot of the. This person was the father of metallurgy. This person was the father of animal husbandry. This 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 person did this, and it lines up pretty well with with what ha- the event on, you know, the, on the Genesis six event. Um, so it's not that we don't have the ability to innovate. We absolutely do. We are creating the image of God. We we are we are right. given. We we create, and we are told to that we had dominion over this over this yeah. place to, to, to name take the, the earth animals. and subdue yeah. and subdue it. Yeah. To take the earth and subdue it. Right. Yeah. We absolutely have that. But what I think happened is that there there had to be a transaction, um, and part of that was the sharing of of knowledge to accelerate it. And that, what's interesting is you can look at the historical record, and there are. I think the one that's really, really fascinating is is the discovery of like Gebekli Tepe in Turkey. If you're not familiar with this discovery, it is um, one of the oldest, if not the oldest, civilizations or civilization city that's been discovered, and it's super complex. and it And it comes at a time that the historical record would say that we were hunter gatherers and we weren't we yeah. weren't agrarian, and out of nowhere massively complex temple complexes and religious circles and a huge stone city is discovered and it doesn't really make sense like how did these people who were just doing you know who are, who are father following you know herds of animals and and not not agrarian not farming all of a sudden create all of this um civil civilized creation technology so we, we we surmise and and it's our opinion, um, but there I think you can find it in the biblical text that there was at least at the very least a transaction of ideas that that these fallen angels that came from you know came and sinned with the you know sinned against creation um, that there was a transaction of technology and and, I, and ideas that accelerated our own our own arc. Um, yeah. And I know it sounds, cra- it sounds very science fiction and crazy, but it's in it's in the text. You can hmm. you can go and you can you know you can read the original Hebrew, and that's what the Elohim thing is very interesting, right? Because like Nathan alluded to earlier, there's a lot of seminaries that would like to teach that that these are the sons of Seth, or this was the line of Cain. But when you go to the the original Hebrew, like Elohim doesn't work for that. The, this was specifically the ancients specifically understood this, wrote this. And to to be that these were of the angelic race that came and they created just how giants are created. It wasn't just because they were big people and like Cain's people were big people and Seth's people were big people and that's what happened. It, it's it's a very uh, it's a it's a very new like post hmm. you know post academic paradigm idea. Yeah. And not an ancient one. Um, yeah, My, I, I know we were talking about Loch Ness, and so I'm sorry. I know we, we kind of. Sure. I'll, <laughs> I'll I'll loop back to that, but I am yeah, okay. curious about. So, do these like hybrid creatures, in y'all's opinion, that you say that Israel was kind of de- was being called to defeat and inflict violence against because they weren't fully human, because they had reproduced with the fallen sons of God. Like, do you think that those hybrids still exist today? Oh, man. That, <laughs> that is... 
So that's what that's where our show has kind of gotten to because there's a lot of people that don't want to talk about satanic ritual abuse and all the things that happen underground and all the things that happen in the remote parts of our world and what's going on with you know strange places in the world where the elites are doing certain occultic ceremonies and like like specifically just like human trafficking taking people you know the sacrificing you know people to the gods right that was what the ancients used to do but a lot of people say that still goes on today like these these occult practices that have been going on since the dawn of time basically the old testament never went away it's just gone underground it's just it's just more overt it's behind the scenes you just don't know what's happening so there are Technically, I mean, that's what we talk about Bigfoot is, is this creature that's out in the woods that people still see today. What is it? Where does it come from? Is it some sort of corrupted creation that goes all the way back? I mean, you're talking thousands of credible witnesses every year see this creature. And so that's the most, that's probably the most interacted with creature that doesn't fit into the scientific paradigm. You know what I mean? Um, people still say there's giants on remote places like in the swamps of Louisiana or the Solomon Islands. These giants were sort of pushed to remote areas and people still say they, they interact with them. Like there are supposedly giants on Solomon Island are still taking people. And there were like giant museums. There was places in like Catalina Island where there were people who ran museums where you could see these bones. You could see the giant skulls. They dug them up and they were, they were in remote parts of the world and they were on display until like, you know, sometimes up in the sixties and then they just all of a sudden vanish. But you can see these, these skulls, these elongated skulls, these giant skulls that are not a lot. They're not, cradle headboarded schools in places like Peru where, you know, those governments aren't as, they're not as active as, you know, getting rid of the narrative that we have here in, in the West, in America, where anything doesn't fit evolution is sort of swept away. So if you discover something that sort of proves this, you know, biblical history, it gets, it's lost, it's MIA, it's gone, it gets swept away. But there are little accounts where you can see remnants of where these beings their bones are being showcased. But so we start with Bigfoot and we say Bigfoot is is this weird anomaly, this creature that people still see today. What is it? Where does it come from? Well, people just want to get weird and say, oh, I had this weird experience and then I can't make sense of it. But we're like, okay, well, this fits into, this has to fit into the to God's creation. This has to fit into the Bible. All this stuff that people are experiencing has to fit into it. So you've heard the term better safe than sorry. And I would say that is a very true motto, especially when it comes to your food supply. We don't know what's going to happen with food shortages. We're coming up on winter. Unfortunately, power outages is something that we have to think about and potentially deal with. And you just want to make sure that your family is protected, that you have all of the all of the food that you could possibly need. And that's why we have our emergency food supply from my Patriot Supply. They offer three-month emergency food kits. You want to buy one for you and every member of your family. Put it in your pantry wherever you um, wherever you want to stow it away. You can save $250 on a three-month emergency food kit when you go to mypatriotsupply.com. All you have to do is go to mypatriotsupply.com and you can get that discount to make sure that your family is prepared to go to mypatriotsupply.com, mypatriotsupply.com. Are you saying that sex trafficking of yeah. children, which as you said, is something, um, a terrible just blight on humanity that goes on every day, abortion, the yes. different kinds of perversion that we see children are the, mm -hmm. uh, at, at, you know, at the expense of children. Um, are you saying that this is being perpetrated by people who are not fully human that are this hybrid of fallen angels and human beings? Well, I, that's a, that's like a whole podcast episode in itself, but what, what gave, what gave the, the ancients the ability to rule, right? So the Pharaohs, they would say that their ancestors were part of this, you know, it, this this bloodline and they had this these long heads if you look at some of the the uh, hieroglyphs why did they have these huge heads and why did they why were they depicted as 10 foot tall and why did they have the ability to rule so a lot of people come on our show and say yeah some of these royal bloodlines go all the way back 
and they could trace their DNA lineage all the way back. And that's why, like Luke was saying about the lineage of Christ, you know, they have every single human being that comes all the way through the line. Bloodlines are a huge part of the Old Testament, huge part of the Bible. And that's why Christ coming from, you know, Abraham to David all the way down is such an important part of the scripture. So I think human beings don't read the DNA or the genetics into the biblical story, but it's all throughout. And it's a big part of it. And I think ancients understood that. So perhaps some of these elites can tie their 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 royal bloodlines all the way back to some of these uh, hybrid entities. It sounds crazy, but there's a lot of people who believe that. Um, we more ask questions on our podcast and let our listeners decide. Uh, we don't. We're not. We're not like too conspiratorial. We're just like, hey, this. We 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 follow the science and 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 the evidence to say that yeah, these giant races existed. They were they were all over the world. They were building pyramids all over the world, building all kinds of megalithic structures that humans don't even know how to re- recreate today. And Luke was alluding to some of that. You know, they were building stones that are that are two tons and they're perfectly put together and no one knows and they're seismic they can withstand earthquakes how do they do this in the ancient days if like luke said if they're just hunter gatherers well they had advanced knowledge from somewhere where do they get it well you look at the bible they get it from these entities these fallen angels they get they told them how to do this stuff and it's and we, we interviewed um some theologians like dr dr michael heiser and he says this is why god gives the law to the to to his people because they don't know how to they don't know how to worship him because they've been so corrupted by these occult um, tribes all around them. I mean, the Israelites are getting seduced daily to go over to these other, you know, occult um, countries and practice what they're doing because they're they're seeing stuff happen. They're they're interacting. They're they're having experiences that are you know that are seductive and and then you think about one of the like God says to have no other gods before me like. If the gods don't exist, why would he say that? You know, so there are a lesser entities around that are seducing people in the Old Testament, and that's an inconvenient truth for a lot of Christians because they they have a very monolithic understanding of the spiritual world. Does that make sense? Yes, I, I guess I'm thinking. I mean, I I don't know the answer to Genesis six, and so that's why I think this conversation yeah. is really interesting because it does have my yeah. wheels turning <laughs> on what a lot of these words mean. I guess I'm mm-hmm. thinking though when we're talking about um, sex trafficking or mm. Epstein okay. Island or, or things like that. And the possibility that these people could have like a bloodline. I mean, I do find that to be just listening fantastical and a little conspiratorial. And my first thought is, well, human beings have capacity for that kind of evil. Yeah. Human beings have capacity for witchcraft, for sex trafficking, for rape, for all of the ter- the deepest, grossest atrocities that most of us can't even imagine. Human beings have the ability to do that without being some kind of hybrid. And one of the reasons, one of the evidences of that is that there are people who repent of those things, who Christ regenerates and reconciles to God through the cross. And so if those people were like half demonic, it's hard for me to understand how God could save someone out of that. If you're saying that basically these kind of hybrids, maybe they didn't have a soul, they don't have a soul, and that's why God said to destroy them. But we have seen people come out of the kind of behavior that you're saying is maybe perpetrated by half human, half demons, and be reconciled to Christ and become Christians. That wouldn't be possible for someone without a soul. So I guess like I don't know the answer, but I don't have to believe in some kind of like hybrid creature in order to know that evil is perpetrated by full on image bearers of God every day. Yeah, but I think I think the question is is why Okay, if evil exists now and evil existed then, then why did God flood the world? That would be my question to you then. Why did God flood the world then if the evil that that, you know we see all over the world and sex trafficking, all the atrocities are happening? Why did God flood the world then and not now? Well, because He promised that He He promised that He wouldn't, and He will. He, I mean, He will destroy His enemies in the end, and like He will. Uh, he will rule in perfect peace and righteousness evermore. And he will destroy sinners. He will destroy his enemies again in the end. But he did promise that, okay, here on earth, until he, until that moment, until Christ comes to avenge uh, his church, like, I'm not going to destroy the earth again. I'm not saying that we are less 
evil than we were in Genesis yeah. 6 yeah, yeah. because it sounds like, you know, all the intentions of a man's heart. We even see in Romans 1, that sounds just as bad as Genesis 6. And yet God has mercy. God has mercy. God has mercy over and over again. But there will yeah, come a day I, when he doesn't have mercy on sin. I I, mm-hmm. I personally don't see the need for like the hybrid thing to understand that. That's. But I'm not saying I have it figured out, but just. Well, no, I'm not, I, I don't think, I don't think they're like, you know, like it's so obvious that it's it's like everyone's secretly a hybrid who's who's c- committing evil around the world. I'm just saying a particular judgment was placed on the world back then because what I think you had is God gets involved when his creation is getting corrupted all the way down to what he d- designed human beings to be. So if you think about it from the flood perspective, God takes his animals and his human and restarts things. So it's not just an evil thing. You know, you know what I mean? It's it's that God created human beings to be here. God created his animals, his his creation. And what they did and what Satan does is he corrupts, he distorts, he manipulates. So he does take people in present day and he he uses his evil influence to flourish the minds and get in the minds of these elites to get them to do terrible things. But they are still human. And elites, what do you mean? Um, just, just like if you like, like the. Well, I mean, if you know, a lot of the what people say is like the New World Order, the people that are behind the scenes, people who are like these old dinosaurs who are, you know, meeting behind closed doors and secretly run the world. I don't know. That's that's more conspiracy. We don't really talk about that a lot on our show, but you know, the 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 people like you've seen it in the last two years. We are like you have entire societies you know, uprooting and rallying around it for freedom. And that their, their politicians are still stuck to like, no, we're going to go with this narrative. And you got to think like, who is controlling this person? Because obviously the people don't want whatever they're pushing. And so on our show a lot, people just send us things all day long about, you know, you know, behind the scenes, all kinds of weird stuff from creatures to conspiracy theories. So we just get, we're in this little weird, weird world where we get so much information from people who are digging and exploring, but that's not really what our show is about, but it, sometimes it dips into those lanes, if that makes sense. So I'm just trying to explain more like, I think, you know, about your evil question. Like I do think that humans are evil, but I think that abortion today has been rebranded as a choice. But it's the same exact thing as d- sacrificing your kids to the gods in the ancient world. Does that make sense? Like, like the evil and evil entities and occult um, people who practice the occult are benefiting from it like they did in the Old Testament. You know, why did people offer up their children to be sacrificed? I mean, every, every human being like, you know, you, you grow this baby out of love and you have this like, why would you offer your child to? An imaginary thing. I guess I, the I don't... same the same reason that you know ancient ancient Israel did, and the same reason God God got angry at them for it because they were, I mean, for lack of a better word, this is the word that's used in the book of Hosea. They were whoring after the other gods, but also as we see, and I think Isaiah, these are gods that cannot hear, they cannot see, they cannot speak, they cannot save, and so I don't know if they are like you know, any kind of animated entity as much as they are just like carven images or ideas of gods that people still have today with no real power beyond, I think what you're saying is that, of course, Satan works through this kind of idolatry. Um, And so I guess people are sacrificing their kids today for the reason that people have sacrificed kids for all of human history. I don't think there is any really depth to the evil that people will perpetrate unfortunately um luke yeah. could you i do have to wrap just in the interest of time although there's so many other things there's uh-huh. so many other things i would love to ask you guys about it really is interesting um luke could you just kind of close this out tell us uh you know where they can find you how they can learn more about this kind of stuff if anyone has like specific questions like what do you think about bigfoot what do you think about the loch ness monster you guys do have a blog where you look at a lot of this stuff and you look at the different testimonies of people so just talk a little bit more about that to close us out sure um yeah the the podcast is is our main our main platform it's uh you can find it on any 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 podcast app where you go apple spotify any of the above we're on youtube it's blurry creatures um 
Nate and I like to say we're just a couple of dummies that like to ask questions and, and bring on experts to talk about a lot of questions that don't don't have straightforward answers, right? Um, you know, whether it be Bigfoot, UFOs, and um, and all the creatures in between, and, and how those fit into a biblical worldview. So, uh, blurrycreatures.com is our website. The podcast is, is Blurry Creatures, and um, yeah, you can interact with us there, uh, and you can you can find all of our 100 and Nate, I don't know how many it is now. 100 and 132. 32. Wow. Podcast. 132 yeah yeah did i got so much more i wish i could have added to that on on yeah on what's happening now with with hybridization and and you know in the manipulation of dna that still continues now and and what what the end goal well, is you there. Can, we know if, if you want to if you want to share like a kind of summarize i don't want to yeah. i don't want to cut you off we do have to go soon but i do want to yeah. hear your thoughts so if you can just kind of give a very, couple minute summary that's fine so very quickly uh, yeah we talked about God giving Adam dominion and gave humanity dominion here on earth, right? That's it's, It was our God-given right. And uh, we also know that there was the prophecy that, that this, the seed of the woman would crush the head of the serpent. And so we know we'd already talked through all of that. It was the line of the Messiah. But I think it also comes back to the fact that that we have we are in charge here. We, as humans, are in charge here. And so when we talk about hybrids now, I think it's interesting to see transhumanism stuff, the manipulation of our DNA, I think it just looks different now. I think mm-hmm. it's it's two pronged. I don't I don't think it's I do think it is removing our humanity. I think that if they can remove the things in our DNA that make us human, specifically those things, um, we will no longer have our dominion here that God's given us, right? That's I think that's part of it. It's no longer like the Messiah has come and Jesus has come and done his work and it, and it and it's the most amazing story that there is. But I still think that the darkness thinks that they can they can take our God-given birthright, and that is to. Paul says we'll judge angels here. Like this is this is this is our place, and the only way we can we can lose that is to lose those things that make us human. So I still think there are initiatives, and those are very. I think if you open your eyes a little bit, you can see what's going on: the, the manipulation of DNA, the upgrade, the human upgrades, the transhumanism, the implanting of chips, all the things that they're talking about coming and what's what's coming. I think a lot of that nefariously is about removing those things that make us human. And mm-hmm. I think that's initially what the, the Gen 6 was event was about, um, yeah. between usurping our dominion here and also preventing the Messiah. But the Messiah has come, and, and I still think the darkness wants to rule here, and they can't, because we've yeah. been given the right, the birthright of, of, of Adam to be in charge here. And the only way that we, that we lose that is to give it away. Hmm. And so I do think that there are things happening. I, I, I think that... From UFO, like the stuff where people talk about alien abductions, it all ends up being weirdly about DNA and, um, you know, and missing yeah. pregnancies and and weird sexual things, right? Why is it still that way? Um, I think that things are still happening. I just think it looks a lot differently. I, d- I don't believe that like hybrids are running the world necessarily, but I do think that they are trying to maybe willingly make us or maybe convince us willingly to give those things up that make hmm. us human. And when we do that, we we no longer we're giving up our birthright to be, yeah. in, in dom, to have the dominion that God gave us in the very yeah. in the very beginning, and I think that's a lot of what we're seeing. It's yeah. it's the it's those efforts um, by the darkness through humans through through people in power, um, you, you know through ill like through blighted or or, or ill intentioned you know um, people that to essentially have us give up those things that God hmm. gave us and. Yeah. Um, the beautiful thing, though, we always like to leave our shows on, uh, on a high note, is that we serve a God who's in the in the business of redemption. Mm-hmm. We serve a God who's yeah. in the business of resurrection. And we serve a God that that has redeemed the world, promised not to destroy it by water, but he will destroy it by fire at the end. If you read Revelation, that's going to happen. Um, but I, we have the ultimate lifeline, and we and we have the, the King of Kings, the uncreated one, the I am who I am, is on our side, and he is, he is our king. He's the king yeah. of all kings. And... And I think mm-hmm. that's where we need to live is that there's a broken world out there and there's a lot of things working against us and, and, and against and against God. But God's already won. He's yeah. written it and we can stand in that victory. And and he is constantly redeeming. If there's one theme in the Bible, it is that God is redeeming humanity unto himself and he is relentless in his pursuit of rede- redeeming his children. Yeah. And and I think that, you know, if all the craziness, creatures and darkness that are out there that we can sleep at night because God is still in control. God still sits on the throne. Yeah. And he's not leaving. Yeah. So 
And that's yeah, true. And I w- oh, go ahead. I was going to say, and I, to answer one of your, your original thoughts, if we have a soul, we can be redeemed. So if, if, if there is a part of a creature that has a soul, then I do believe God can redeem that creature. That would be in the line of redemption. So human beings, if there's, if there's enough human or whatever, I do, I do believe that, which is like a, a, a long, but I didn't want to leave that out there because I know yeah. we kind of talked about that a little bit, but yeah. I do think that if there is some sort of tainting of the blood or whatever, but if there's still soul there, yeah, then they, yeah. they can be redeemed. So I think some of these creatures didn't have them. Yeah. Well, that's, I mean, we can absolutely agree that God is a <laughs> God of redemption and that yeah. um, who he is transcends all of our questions, transcends our understanding, transcends time and space and physical reality. And not just looking at Genesis 6, but in Ephesians 6, we do see that our battle is not against primarily flesh and blood, but yeah. uh, the spiritual realm that often uh, we do not see. And quite frankly, we don't know exactly what that looks like. Um, and so I think that the questions that you guys are asking are interesting. I don't know if I agree, um, I, I, but I do think it's really interesting. And I hope it gets other people's wheels turning too to ask, uh, to ask their own questions about Genesis 6. Really interesting. So thank you guys yeah. for taking the time thank to you. come on. And I, I really yeah. appreciate it a lot. Yeah, and we bring on yeah. like, you know, scholars and doctors and all these people on our show. So it's not just like a bunch of hearsay and yeah. And we try to do it as as, as thoughtful and as possible and yeah. with with actual data and, and study and stuff. So thank you so much yeah. Tyler, for having us on. And, thank you. And I know it's I know it sounds weird on the surface, but you know. Hey, give us a it's shot. it's <laughs> interesting. It got me asking questions for sure. I'm gonna be thinking about this all day. So thank you so much. <laughs> Thanks for taking yeah. the time. Thank you. 